Hey guys, Coach Ben here, BigBenches.com, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about how to correct elbow flare on the bench press. We all know that issue, right? We get down, we're in a good tuck position, all of a sudden uh, we just can't ha help it, but we end up flaring out as we go into that press. Now, this could be due to, to quite a few things, all right, and I'm going to attack how to correct it with you. But I want everyone to know that this elbow flare issue is not one that might be corrected overnight. It's not like you can just do this better and then all of a sudden it's gone. All right, typically with this issue of elbow flaring, it comes from either, um, you know, obviously a lack in technique, right, having to adjust to new things, or even more so um, an imbalance in strength. Because if you have been doing that for so long, think of you benching like that for five years, right? The muscle groups that you're going to build up or the lack there of muscle groups that you're going to build up, right? You have pretty much ingrained one pattern of doing something. So that itself is going to be really hard to overcome. That's like if you rode a bike for the longest time in one way and then I told you, now you have to go and do that differently. You know, think about how weird that might be. You know, so it's the same thing with elbow flare. When you ingrain a certain pattern, um, you know, change is very, very difficult to come by. So it's usually a slow process. And typically what you see with elbow flare, because it usually comes down to a strength based issue, either you're not maintaining your tightness, right, or you just are lacking some strength and you're shifting to other muscle groups, you're usually going to find that you're going to hit this threshold where you just can't hold your position well. So for example, maybe you get up to 85% and that's when you start noticing that you're doing a elbow flare. Before that, you can maintain it. After you get to 85%, you can't. So usually the hope is with elbow flares that you can keep progressing up that threshold, you know, building up um, through the lighter weights until you can finally say, all right, I hit a new max and I did an elbow flare. That's awesome. That's great progress. But typically, if you're going to go for a max, you're going to experience that elbow flare. So it's not such a quick thing that everyone wants to think it is. Um, it's going to take some time and some effort. All right, I'm going to show you the path you need to take to actually get stronger there, but uh, it's going to take some time. So one thing is going to be back tightness. All right, the ability to lock down your shoulder blades, right? We get that pinch on the bench, and then we lock down. You see what I just did there, right? That retraction and that lockdown. And the bending the bar locks me up all the way here. So a lot of times when we're talking elbow flare, it's due to a lack of tightness in the back. So I take the bar and I'm just kind of resting here through my back. I'm not really doing anything to tighten up with it like I just did there, right? Um, and then when I go to press, I'm kind of flared out into my shoulders. Even if I try to tuck, it's not via my lats. All right, so if I, touch lower and I tuck, right? I'm probably, once I go to press, I'm gonna go to my predominant muscle groups because I didn't do anything with my back. Now watch what happens with my positioning if I utilize my back, all right? So I squeeze, I drive my shoulders into the pad, I lock them down, my shoulder blades down to my hips, and I bend the bar. See how everything wants to turn in for me. Nothing wants to flare out, all right? Everything wants to turn in. So again, I squeeze, lock down, bend, and then I touch low, and then I can hold that tightness, especially if I continue to bend the bar on the way up. Bend the bar as in I'm doing this. I'm twisting into it. I'm not trying to bend it over me with my wrist. I'm trying to twist into it, okay? Everything wants to come in from doing that, right? So that's what we're looking for with back tightness. And it's gonna be a work just to get stronger at doing that, holding that position. All right, so none of this is going to happen quickly. It's all something that's going to take some time. All right, what else needs to happen is tricep strength. You know, for one upper back strength to get into that position and hold it and work that technique, but also tricep strength. Because what happens when you have elbow flare, you're disconnected from your back, so you're predominantly pressing through your shoulders and your chest. Okay? Not necessarily a bad thing to build up, but when it comes to not having that technique flaw happen, right, 
you want to really press from your lats and your triceps. So the upper back, um, building that up, doing a lot of high row stuff, face pulls, pull ups, all that stuff's going to help. Tricep strength, prioritizing more um, push downs, close grip bench, um, rolling dumbbell, tricep extensions, all that stuff. Build up your tricep strength, build up the upper back build up the tricep strength and continue to harp on the technique when the weight is light enough that you can actually hold and maintain it and then you'll be on your way to correcting elbow flare all right but it's nothing that is probably going to be a quick fix hopefully it is hopefully you have not been doing that for a long enough period of time where it can be a quicker fix uh, if you have majority been pressing like that for a period of a year plus that's when it becomes difficult to really correct that all right, so it's not a quick fix by any means, but Coach Ben here showing you the way to ditch the elbow flare. And you know where to find me. You can meet me on a bench. <laughs>